Welcome everybody, it's your boy Blue here, and today I kind of wanted to talk about something very specific that happened in the game the past week, but really hasn't had a whole lot of attention brought to it. So if you'll remember back in June, they announced that they were going to be changing how the game economy works. Specifically, they were going to reduce uh, repair costs for higher tier ships, something like 40% for tier 9s and 10s, which was a big deal. Before uh, they made that change, even on a good victory, you would still lose uh, a lot of money playing high tier ships because of how the game economy worked and how high the maintenance costs were on repairing a higher tier ship. So they changed that for June and they announced that they were going to continue the reduced repair prices through July. So as of recording this, it is August 7th. Um, and if you, if you notice the past couple of days with the game, the meta has shifted dramatically once again back into what I feel like is very stagnant, very uh, undynamic gameplay with battleships and high tier sh high tier ships in particular not wanting to be aggressive not wanting to uh, use their health pools for what they are meant to be and that should be you should be taking damage you should be playing aggressively you should be supporting your teammates however what this economy situation does the game economy does is encourage passive play not being aggressive not having uh, your battleships and your high tier ships push up and engage the enemy because no matter how much damage you do if you take damage you are going to face a very heavy repair cost at the end of the battle there is no incentive to be aggressive there is no incentive to support teammates who are further up further up towards the enemy so what this what this does is it encourages that that battleship snipe meta that everybody was complaining about for the longest time and i really believe that the the repair cost changes that they did in june and july really helped to alleviate a lot of those issues now i certainly don't have any direct data to support this and Let's be honest, Wargaming is not the most uh, transparent company when it comes to sharing data with the player base and, and sharing their decisions and their thought processes on making big game changes. Uh, so we'll kind of have to wait and see what happens with this, but at least for right now, I've noticed over the past week the, the change, the subtle but definite shift back into that very, very toxic kind of gameplay style. This gets me into my next point about premium time and how premium time, I feel, should work in this game. So premium time is basically just a way for you to spend real money to speed up the process of grinding, to make more credits, and generally just shorten the, the amount of grind time that there is. And this is a very important uh, part of Wargaming's business models. A lot of these uh, free-to-play games require or really rely on some sort of subscription or premium model, and and that's okay. That's you know the it's a company at the end of the day, and they have to make money. But where it becomes a problem is when it is absolutely required for high-tier gameplay if you don't want to lose hundreds of thousands of credits on even a victory. So premium time should be there to reinforce good play, reinforce good behavior, which is, you know, being a good teammate, uh, attacking, being aggressive, getting kills, getting damage, and generally helping the team and helping yourself. So the game economy should should reward that style of play. But right now, even with a really high level game, a really large amount of damage, a really large amount of XP, the game still punishes you, absolutely punishes the player 
for being aggressive, for having those um, high level games, good and bad players together. It it absolutely discourages that aggressive style of gameplay, which I find to be the most interesting to play and to watch. And, and frankly, if you get to the point where tier nine and 10 ships, you can have fantastic games in them, and then you get to the battle results screen and you see that you lost 150,000 credits, that doesn't, that doesn't feel good. That doesn't encourage you to keep playing like that. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna say to the average player, is going to see that and say, okay, so what did I do wrong? So what did what did what is the game telling me right now that I did wrong so that I lose that many credits even though I did a good job in terms of damage or XP. So that's going to force players to either one not play tier 9 and 10 ships, which I do not believe is the right answer. You should be able to play whatever tier of ship you want. Uh, with or without premium, and if you're a good player, you should be able to continue playing them without having to buy uh, a premium ship to grind credits or even go to lower tiers to grind credits. That is, I believe, the absolutely wrong answer, and, and that's a good way to turn a lot of people off from your game. The second thing that having high repair costs on high tiers does is... It's going to force the players into changing the style of their game. And so that's really what what breeds that high high tier sniping meta where the battleships all sit in the back. The cruisers don't want to go any far forward because they'll get deleted by the battleships. And the destroyers run around and get caps and duel with each other. I don't know about you, but... I do not find games that devolve into long-range sniping duels with battleships and cruisers to be very interesting. I think it's boring. I don't think it's exciting. It really discourages a lot of different styles of play. You get a lot of the long-range uh, torpedo meta back again. So my point is, overall, if you're a good player and you enjoy that style of play, you enjoy the tier of ship you're on, you enjoy playing in that ship, and you do a good job, you should not be punished by the game just because you're playing at a higher tier ship. The game economy is there for encouraging players to play a certain way, which is to do a lot of damage, get caps, get XP, help their teammates out. But right now, the game economy punishes that kind of play. And I don't find that very interesting. I don't find that very, very fun overall. And if you like long range sniping with battleships, uh, that that's great. If, if that's this kind of game that you wanna play, um, you just have to realize how the game is set up and how it rewards players for their actions. So. Long-range sniping generally does not produce a lot of damage. Unless you are very good, there's too much RNG uh, for long-range to get citadels or to get large amounts of damage. You're pretty much just rolling the dice. So overall, you are not contributing as much to your team as people who are aggressive, who get stuck into the battles, and, and contribute more for their team that way. All right, guys, I promise rant is over. Uh, if you agree, disagree, think that they should do something else with the the changes, I encourage you to you know, type them in the comments, talk about them on the forums, and, and really let Wargaming know because at the end of the day, if everybody disagrees or wants something different with the system and it threatens their, their, their wallets, uh, that's how you're going to get them to change. Uh, so I encourage you to talk about it, discuss it, uh, and if you enjoyed this video, if you don't like these kinds of videos, let me know. This is still very new to me, so uh, let me know what you guys like to see. That's going to do it for me, guys. Good luck, and I hope to see you next time.